Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about how John Pearson, the author, got involved with the twins in 1967. As we know, John Pearson was given the task of writing a book about the lives of the twins, and we're going to talk about what led up to that and how it came about. It was quite a bad time for John Pearson to be involved, really. This was a time when the twins were at their maddest. Their prime as gangsters were behind them as far as making big money goes. But the fear they generated was probably more so than it had ever been, with two known murders under their belt and a significant hand in one other, that being the Frank Mitchell killing. By this time, it would have been known very widely that they committed these acts, so I think the level of fear would have been great, and also especially since Ronnie's mental health was playing a major part in things. Also, Reg was just as volatile as Ronnie at this stage after the death of Francis and his heavy drinking and Valium taken. I think the frequency of the twins' violence at this stage was greater and for very slight things. I don't think it would have took much for them to give somebody a beating or worse, as demonstrated by the stabbing of their one-time friend Mickey Morris. There was also an incident with Bobby Ramsey. I'm not sure if that was around this time. But they turned up to give Bobby Ramsey a kick in. Bobby Ramsey offered a straightener with one of the twins and Ronnie Cray was supposed to have said we haven't come here for a straightener, we have come here to really hurt you. I'm not sure if this was in 1967 that this took place but that's just a shows you that even with their friends or old friends they could get very violent and some of it was just over slight things. I don't think it took much to upset Ronnie. The ball got rolling with John Pearson in early 1967 when a showbiz agent called a friend of the twins called Laurie O'Leary about a proposition for the twins. Laurie O'Leary, as you know, was a good friend of the twins and was very close to them. He, along with people like Dickie Morgan and Johnny Squibb, was one of their oldest friends. Laurie lived close by to Valance Road growing up in Cheshire Street. Cheshire Street is where Ginger Marks was shot dead and also where the Carpenter's Arms is. The showbiz agent was called Drew Harvey and he was a friend of Laurie's. Drew Harvey had called on behalf of a firm of solicitors in New York. They wanted to make contact with Ronnie and Reggie Cray. At the time, Laurie O'Leary was helping Charlie Cray run the Charlie Cray Agency. I'm not 100% sure what this was, but I think it was to book acts for clubs, maybe the Twins Clubs or other clubs that they had an interest in. Drew asked if the Twins would be interested in writing a book with the possibility of a film being made about themselves. At first, Laurie became suspicious with this, as it could have been a plot just to get information out of the twins. By this time, the net was slowly closing in on the twins, so Laurie would have known this, so he was a bit suspicious at first. Drew told Laurie that the twins were seen as the equivalent of New York's Mafia. They were seen as the governors of crime in Britain and had a colourful life. There was, in fact, many governors of crime in Britain. There was different areas like Newcastle and Manchester, obviously, they had their own sets of governors but the twins were obviously the most known they had dealings with the american mafia i'm not sure if other gangs around the country at this time had any dealings with the mafia but i don't think so after weighing things up laurie came to the conclusion that drew was serious and it wasn't a setup laurie had known drew for a long time so even though he was suspicious he probably thought that drew wouldn't be setting him up he had done some deals in the rock business, uh, the music business. That was what where what Laurie was his main focus was at that time. He also managed some clubs for the Twins. Laurie did he, most notably the Barn Twist Club, which was situated on the middle floor of Esmeralda's Barn. So Laurie ran that. So he had some good connections in the music business, and Drew Harvey was one of them. Laurie said he would approach the twins with the offer and he did. He met Ronnie Cray at his mother's house in Valance Road. Ronnie was surprised with the offer but he duly asked how much money was involved. Laurie stated that the fee should not be anything less than $100,000. At this Ronnie's eyes lit up with excitement. Money would have been 
an issue for the twins at this stage a lot of things had dried up um, they didn't I don't think they had many clubs at this point the few clubs they did have they were probably just getting protection out of I don't think they actually owned any clubs in 1967 Laurie went back to Drew Harvey to arrange a meeting with the solicitors firm and the twins and this was arranged to take place at the Grosvenor House Hotel uh, this did happen two junior lawyers were sent over to meet the twins the junior lawyers were very apprehensive about meeting they had been staying at the Southridge Hotel in Oxford Street London and had inquired about the twins to some doorman of the hotel and they were told some horrific stories about the twins I think they were told they were killers and all sorts so the junior lawyers would have been very worried about the meeting even at this stage while they were still free the twins did have a legend forming around them there was lots of stories about them some true and some probably not true Laurie met the lawyers at the hotel before the meeting and explained that although the twins were very hard men he assured them that they would be safe he did tell them not to mention money and to leave that to him Laurie and the lawyers left for the Grosvenor at about 5 p.m when they arrived the twins were waiting outside Ron told them that they can't use the Grosvenor as there was a dance on that evening so they would have to go somewhere else they eventually chose the Dolphin Square restaurant in Pimplico this would be the same Dolphin Square that is at the centre of child abuse claims and other scandals maybe the twins changed the meeting place because they was worried about the hotel being bugged so this is maybe why they changed it from the Grosvenor to the Dolphin Square restaurant the meeting went well present were the junior lawyers Laurie O'Leary, Alex Steen and the twins Alex Steen was a good friend of the twins I think he was involved in boxing and was a ticket agency operator according to Laurie O'Leary some of the firm including Albert Donoghue were waiting outside in a van armed in case it was a setup I believe this the twins would have been very paranoid at this stage and they didn't want to take any chances so they probably did get some of the firm tooled up in a van waiting outside eventually John Pearson was recruited for the job of writing the book he had done two popular books before the life of Ian Fleming and the life of James Bond he did meet up with the twins at the end of 1967 the first meeting was held at the home of the twins good friend Jeff Allen the place as you know is called Geddon Hall it was in Suffolk this was very shortly after the murder of Jack McVitie and it was noted by Pearson that Reg was sporting a bandage on his hand um, that would have been from the stabbing of McVitie where Reg did get quite a bad cut to his hand Pearson did ask Reg how he got this cut and Reg replied that he got it gardening after this successful meeting another meeting was arranged for Pearson to visit the twins in the East End Pearson wrongly thought that Geddon Hall was owned by the twins so he was in for a shock when he came to the East End they put Pearson in a flat that the firm called the dungeon John Pearson says it was Blackwall buildings but Laurie O'Leary the twins friend says in his book that it was called Howard Dwellings in Bethnal Green this is possibly Howard Dwellings here this was in Bethnal Green this is the buildings today this place would have would make sense as it is close by to Valence Road but so is Blackwall buildings so I do believe it was Blackwall buildings where John Pearson stayed and I think Laurie O'Leary is mistaken in the book Crayology it does say that it was flat to Blackwall buildings so I do believe this Blackwall buildings were basically slums they were quite quite bad like conditions Ronnie was supposed to have said I will show him the fucking East End this is a map from 1951 showing where the Blackwall buildings was as you can see it's just behind Valence Road in what was then called Fullbourne Street uh, now it's called Low Mass Street this is Low Mass Street today I'm not sure where the buildings would have been it's possibly where the park is so yeah they would have been quite big so that they could be just where the park is now 
This would have been a huge culture shock for Pearson, having stayed at the Ritz Hotel previously and his trip to Gedding Hall. Landing in the black wall buildings would have been not very nice. The flat had cockroaches, a mildew, a bare light bulb, some boarded up windows and the bed was propped up in the corner on a packing crate. After a while of being at the black wall buildings, Reg turned up to take Pearson to the Old Horns pub. The Old Horns pub was what the twins were using at this time in 1967. It was run by a friend called Teddy Berry. When Pearson got there, he had conversations with some of the firm. Of course, the firm were rehearsed on what to say about the twins and they were all praised for them. So it was all cleverly rehearsed beforehand. John Pearson did see some violence firsthand from Ronnie Cray in the Old Horns. I think this might have been in 1968. According to Tony Lambriano, Ronnie smashed a man in the face with a glass just for looking at him funny. This was in full view of Pearson who was gobsmacked. John Pearson was with the twins from that initial meeting in 1967 until the twins arrest in 1968. He was with the twins the night before their arrest where they visited the Old Horns and then moved on to the Astor Club. His book was published in 1972 the profession of violence it's been a bestseller since then up until today so he's earned a good living off it the twins hated the book and so did their mother violet she never spoke to pearson again after the book came out i'm not sure if the twins spoke to him after the book came out they did write to him from prison before the book came out but i'm not sure if they spoke to him after john pearson was going to put the story of the boothby scandal in the book but he had to abandon that idea. He did later cover it in another book. I think it was called Notorious. So this is how John Pearson got involved with the twins. It was started through Laurie O'Leary back at the start of 1967. Like I said at the start of the video, it was a very bad time for John Pearson to get involved with the twins the paranoia from the twins would have been at an all-time high i think ronnie did get paranoid about john pearson being around them according to laurie o'leary so i'm not sure if pearson would have been in danger but who knows the twins were pretty crazy at this time with their violence so i don't know i certainly wouldn't have wanted to be around them i will say for somebody that was around the twins quite a bit uh, for a few months in 67 and 68, John Pearson does get quite a few things wrong in his books. The Profession of Violence is a good book. It, was, it wasn't the first one about the twins, but it's the one that got big with the mainstream and it did enhance the legend of the twins to what we know today. Uh, John Pearson was also involved in the film legend um, i think legend was based off the profession of violence um, in fact i know it was because they reissued the book didn't they with um, tom hardy on the cover por portraying the twins uh, i didn't really like legend it had some good bits in it but it wasn't really the film that i wanted out of a cray twins film um, i do prefer the 1990 film the craze even though that does get some things wrong it's still i think better than legend um i know a lot of people do like legend uh, tom hardy's a great actor and he played the parts well but it just doesn't do it for me that film so i don't think there's much more i can say about john pearson i think i've covered most things I might have missed some things out. If I have, you're welcome to point that out in the comments. It's always interesting to read what you've got to say. And that's about it. Um, it's only a short video, but, you know, I thought I would make it anyway about John Pearson. He did play quite an important role in the Twins' lives, so it was worth making a video about that, um, about how he got involved. So I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you again in the next video. I think they're an extraordinarily murderous, effective pair of gangsters. I think there's been covered up, I say, with a lot of schmaltz, a lot of silly sentimental twaddle, but uh, they were very, very good at their job. Uh, if they hadn't started killing people, they probably would have been in the House of Lords by now, I think.